to keep looking at the story of Jonah, and we're going to move ahead a little bit, albeit about three verses, but we're going to keep looking at his story and how God called him, was leading him to do something, and he didn't quite want to do it and had some thoughts on that. But one of the things I find fascinating in the story of Jonah is the directions that Jonah had. He was told to go one way, he went the other way. And it, it's a little hard in our day and age to understand that because we have things called Siri, or we have like GPS, or back in the day there was TomTom. Tom. And if you want to go re even further back in the day, there was this thing from AAA called Triptix. Has anyone used a triptych from AAA before? Oh, first service, they didn't use it as much. I guess they knew directions or maybe used the Rand McNally Atlas. But it was great because you can just, you, you told a AAA where you wanted to go on vacation or this particular trip, and they would put, put it on the map, and they would highlight the best routes for you to take, and you just had to flip the page each time and it would get you to where you're going and the best part is they gave you these books on like all the hotels and restaurants and attractions and all the states that you were going to be traveling through so you knew where to stop or or what to do or or maybe discover that giant ball of twine that you didn't know existed and it was just it was easy to get around you didn't have to get lost and nowadays, we don't use triptychs as much, or we use our phones for the GPS on there, or maybe our cars have the GPS. One of my dear friends back home, she uses the GPS on her phone to get around in Italian. The thing is, is she's not Italian, nor does she speak it, but she gets directions in Italian. And we asked her, we go, um, you, you don't speak Italian. So why, why do you have this? She goes, I like the voice better. So she gets her directions spoken in Italian and apparently is learning along the way how to speak some Italian. Um, so if you need directions from her, just be ready to translate into another language. Um, but it's just, it's great. I remember as a kid, we had the trip tick when we took our big family trip to Disney World. We drove from New Jersey down to Orlando, and I couldn't wait every day to flip that page to see that next bit of the leg that we're traveling. And I was so excited. I would look up from my books and stop reading so I can follow along on the trip tick. Now you have to understand, I was the kid that when we traveled back then way before Kindles, I would go, okay, this trip is about four books long. And I would pack four books, paper books, remind you. And then I would go, but I need a backup book. So I would pack not one, not two, but sometimes three backup books, just in case I read a little faster than I thought I would. But I wanted to read the triptych. And isn't it nice to think if we could have a triptych or a map or a GPS as we travel in our own faith journeys, the, you know, turn right here and do this or, or go here and take care of that. We, we would know exactly what God wanted us to do. We would know what turns to take what turns not to take. And, and in some ways, Jonah had his own triptych. He knew exactly where God wanted him to go, and he knew exactly what God wanted him to do, except he didn't flip the page on that map. No, he went in the opposite direction. And he thought he could write his own set of directions better than God. And our own personal faith journeys, we look for that. Because at times it can be confusing as to what God wants us to do. And at times, if you're anything like me, you want to hear Siri's voice saying, in 1.5 miles, turn right on. In half a mile, turn right on. Or you want to be able to look, if you're old school, look on an atlas and know exactly where to go, know exactly what to do in our face. And, and we sometimes wonder where are those directions? We sometimes have to step out and trust God in those directions. And we may not always want to hear the directions that God is giving us. And we have our own Jonah moments, don't we? Where we know what God wants us to do. 
We know where God is leading us. And we want to run far, far away, just like Jonah did. And we'll say things like, it's just too hard. Or God really can't want me to do that. Well, I know God can't use me that way. What was God thinking? Or that doesn't make sense. And we give all these reasons as we try to run far away. And our enemy, Satan, tries to make us believe wrongly that we're doing the right thing. That we actually know better than God. And that we can just run away. Well, today, God is telling us to just stop running away. To just stop running. And we are learning from Jonah in this series. And Jonah had a very unusual way that he learned this lesson. That we can't run away from God. We can try to go in the opposite direction, thinking we're getting away, thinking that we're running away. But when we stop and we just turn around, we see that God has been right there with us the whole time, patiently waiting for us to stop running, to turn around and instead run towards his loving arms. That's what God wants for us. That's what we're looking at in Jonah's story today, that we can stop running away and we can start running towards God. Now, when we get directions, it's sometimes hard to trust the directions, right? Like you don't think it's quite right. Or you're in an unfamiliar city and you, you just don't know like what streets are after what. Like is it the president's in alphabetical order? Do the numbers go in this order? Like you, you're just unsure. Well, one time when I was still living in New Jersey, I just finished college and I was consulting with a church to help them rebuild their Sunday school ministry. And part of that setup was that I would live with a family that was a part of the church for about five days of the week, and then I would go home to my house and and work my other job and and take care of some stuff at home. And the first Sunday I was there, I was meeting my host family, and we were going to coordinate. I was going to learn where the house was and kind of settle in a little bit, and and we would set up our schedules and, and just hang out and get to know one another. And... The mom, she had to take care of some stuff at church, but I was all ready, and and her younger daughter, who let's just call her Lulu, um, was ready to go. So so the mom was like, hey, Lulu, why don't you and Vicky go, why don't you take Vicky home, get in the house, settle in or whatever, kind of show her the room we got set up, and, and we'll pick up lunch and we'll meet up. And I was like, okay. So I take Lulu, who I've known for a total of about an hour at that point, and we hop in my car, and she's giving me directions. Well, you have to keep in mind, she was about seventh grade, I think. I could be a little bit off, but middle school age clearly not driving yet, and I'm now supposed to trust the directions of a middle schooler to this house. I don't know where it is or how to get to. I was like, okay. So we hop in the car, and and she tells me where to turn, and we just start going down this road, and and we're chatting. We're having really good conversation, and and it's fun, and and I'd be like, hey, like, are we supposed to turn yet? Did we miss a turn maybe because we were lost in conversation? She's like, no, just keep going. I was like, okay. So we keep going, like another two miles or whatever. And I was like, are, are we coming up to the turn yet? Like, did we miss it? I'm starting to think if we're lost, who do I call to get directions? I don't even know where we are to even describe so we could get the right directions. And she's like, no, just keep going. Just keep going. And it, it's like, we must have gone like 10 miles down this road. I have no idea where we are. And And all of a sudden, she's like, oh, turn left up here at the light. I was like, okay, finally there's a turn. Maybe we're going back or whatever. So we turn. We go maybe a mile down that road. She's like, oh, turn left here. We're right on the corner. And all this time, I honestly did not trust that she was giving me the right directions. And we just kept going down a road, and and she forgot or missed a landmark that she knew, whatever, and and we were just lost. No, we were going the right way. She knew the whole time where we were going, 
didn't, we didn't get lost one bit. We actually did go the fastest route, most literally the most direct route to their house. And I just needed to trust her. I need to trust that she knew how to get to her house, the one that she's grown up in, better than I knew how to get to her house that I, at that point, had never gotten to. I now know about four different ways to get to the house and, and can direct all y'all to it. Um, but that first time, I wasn't trusting her. She still teases me to this day uh, about that, and she does drive around really well, and we, get, we don't get lost if we do get lost, it's because we're both lost and we couldn't figure it out on Siri. But it was one of those times where I thought I was right and she was wrong. Except it was her home that she went to every day, especially from church a couple of times a week, and I had never done it. Somehow, I thought because I was older, I knew better than she did. And sometimes in our faith journeys, we think we might know better than God, so we'll try and tell God the directions, or we try and run away. That's what Jonah was doing. He was a prophet in Israel, and he thought he could tell God the better set of directions, the better way of doing things. He didn't like the plan that God had to go to Nineveh and tell them to repent to repent of their sins and rebellion against God and receive God's love. He didn't like that plan. So instead, he went in the opposite direction. And it, when you look at it on a map, all Jonah had to do is he only had to walk 500 miles inland. But he didn't want to walk 500 miles. Instead, he wanted to go down to Joppa, find a random boat, and the one that he found went to Tarshish, which was, at to them, the end of the world. 2,500 miles in the opposite direction. And he thought that if he just went far enough away and avoided God enough, God wouldn't make him do what he didn't want to do. If he could just go in a different direction, if he could just run away, God would see how much he didn't like it and change his plans. Maybe get someone else to talk to him. Or maybe Jonah thought, I don't know, that if God saw that Jonah didn't want to go to Nineveh and tell them to repent, that God would be like, all right, they, they won't repent. I hear what Jonah's saying, and, and we don't have to do it. But that isn't what God did. God didn't let Jonah simply run away because it was easier. So let's pick up the story. We get jump back into the first chapter of Jonah, and we're going to pick up at verse 4. So this is the point where God has just told Jonah to go to Nineveh to tell them to repent. And Jonah says, nope, not going to do it, and he gets on the boat. So in verse 4, this is what happens. Then the Lord sent a great wind on the sea, and such a violent storm arose that the ship threatened to break up. All the sailors were afraid, and each cried out to his own God. And they threw the cargo into the sea to lighten the ship. But, God, but Jonah had gone below deck, where he laid down and fell into a deep sleep. The captain went to him and said, How can you be asleep? Get up and call on your God. Maybe he will take notice of us so that we will not perish. So not only was Jonah running away to avoid it, but Jonah falls asleep to keep avoiding what God was having him to do. So he's on a boat to go to the end of the world to get as far away as he could, he falls asleep. I'm sure he was tired from his trip and, and all that running. So he falls asleep. And as he's sleeping, a storm rises up that scares even the seasoned sailors to the point where they thought they were going to die. They thought that the ship was going to 
collapse. So they're throwing off cargo. They're, they're praying to any and every God they can think of, thinking some, some God is mad at us and we have to make them feel better. So they're praying out as much as they can. The captain realizes Jonah's not there to help out. So he goes to find him and says, hey, you got to wake up and help us out here. Like, pray to your God and, and help us get through this storm. And here's the thing. We like to kind of tease Jonah and say, oh, look, he wasn't doing it. But how many times in our own lives does God direct us to do something or to go somewhere? And we don't like it. We don't agree with it. We sometimes even think to the point that, that God is wrong. So we say no, either in our actions or in our words, and we try and run away. Maybe it's the times that God wants us to trust him just a little bit more, that God is stretching us in faith to help us grow in faith. The times where we don't quite know what that next step is, and God is saying, I'm in control. I've got this. Just trust me. Or the times that we just want to know the details. We just want to know what to expect, how we can pack that suitcase for that trip so that we can, we go, well, I got all these plans. Like, let me know which one it is. And God's like, no, 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 no. I got the details. You don't have to know them. I'm taking care of it. And God is easing our fears so that we can trust him more. See, in our own ways, in our lives, we try to run away from God. Whether it's out of fear because we don't know what to expect. We don't know what that step is. Or we're afraid that someone is going to ridicule us or reject us. Or we run away because we have pride thinking that we know what is best. We know exactly what God is doing. And so if we hear something different, well, it must be wrong because I know what it is. And that's false pride. That's the enemy trying to deceive us. When we fear, it's the enemy trying to distract us. Maybe it's just simply we don't understand what God is doing. And so we try and run away. We choose, like Jonah, to go 2,500 miles in the opposite direction instead of 500 miles straight to God right there in what God's doing. Jonah tried to ignore it. Jonah literally tried running away thinking, if I'm far enough, God can't use me. God can't have me go to Nineveh if I'm in Tarshish. There's not enough time to get back to do what God wants me to do. And don't we have similar excuses in our lives? God says, hey, go talk to that person. Go help this person. And we're like, no, nope, I kind of don't want to do it. Or the time that God says, hey, I need you to step out in faith and trust me on this. And you're like, no, nope, I don't have the details. I'm not going to do it. Or God says, go here. Do this, and you're like, mm, God. God's going to stop asking. God's going to find another way. But what we forget is that when we run away, God's there. And all we got to do is we turn back around, and we see that God is there. And we can start running to his open arms that's saying, I've been here the whole time. I'm right here with you. You can trust me when you're afraid. You don't have to step away. You can trust me that I'm going to give you the words to say when I need you to talk to somebody. It's my words through you. You can trust me when I say I need you to do this or do that or go here and do that because I've already equipped you to do it. So don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to be rejected. We just have to stop running. So each time 
that we think that God's got it wrong, we realize that God had it right the whole time. The times we think that we know better, we see more of God's plan and realize we didn't really know the half of it. When we can recognize that our enemy, Satan, is working to try and distract us, is working to discourage us, is working to pull us in this other direction. We don't have to go that way. We can stop and be in God's arms because he's been there the whole time. That God is is keeping us on the right path. God is showing us that next step. As the psalmist said, be a lamp unto our feet. doesn't mean we get to see down the road all the time, but we at least know that next step. Know that God's taking care of it. So we can run to God's arms. And a mentor of mine, he reminded me of this point when we were talking about the parable of having your foundation how you can have your foundation built on sand, or you can have your foundation built on the rock. And, and we were talking about it, and my mentor goes, you know what I don't like about this story? I was like, what? And I wasn't quite sure what, what he was going to say. He goes, what I don't like about this story is that no matter what, storms happen. You're not going to avoid a storm. And he's right. How many times in our own lives a storm rises up? It's a hardship financially. It's times where we question, are we doing the right thing? Are we, are we really trusting in God? It's that health diagnosis that we didn't expect or the diagnosis that just seems to keep getting worse or it's just confusion, not, not seeing that lamp at our feet and we just ask, God, where are you? Help me. And it's when our foundation is on the rock, our foundation is on Jesus, that we see in the midst of the storm that he's the calmer of our storms. We don't have to be like Jonah and go to the lower decks of the ship to fall asleep thinking that if I just sleep through the storm, nothing bad will happen and I'll be okay. We don't need the Holy Spirit to work in our lives like the captain of Jonah's ship to wake us up and say, hey, I need you to pay attention. I need you to be doing this. You may try and run around going, I don't know what to do. I don't know what's going to happen. And we're crying out in confusion. And when we just slow down and we quiet ourselves, we see that God's like, hey, remember me? I've got the plan. I've got this. We don't have to throw the cargo off the side of the ship thinking that might help. We just have to get up and go, God, uh, can you calm this storm? Can you calm me in this storm? We just stop and we fall into his loving arms, letting him take care of us. And we hear the words of the psalmist in Psalm 107 when he wrote, Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he brought them out of their distress. He stilled the storm to a whisper. The waves of the sea were hushed, and they were glad when it grew calm, and he guided them to their desired haven. Storms come up. Temptations to run away will happen. And it's a matter of where are we running to or where are we running from. We we are not going to understand everything that God is doing in the moment. And maybe in the moment, we may not even agree with it. But it's by faith that we trust that God knows what God is doing and has the perfect plan. God does have a plan for us. And we're just to follow knowing it's for our good. And when Satan tries to tempt us to run the other way, we can stop and instead run towards God into his loving arms. When we try and turn and 
when we try to turn away, God is walking with us. God's been waiting for us to turn back around into his loving arms. In fact, his arms are so wide open that they fit on a cross. The ultimate sign of his love for you, for me, for the entire world. Because he sent his son, his one and only son, Jesus, to live the life that we were supposed to live. And Jesus died willingly the death that was meant for us. And then he was buried in, in a borrowed tomb. But he didn't stay there because on the third day he rose, he conquered sin and death, and he says, stop running because I'm right here. They tried to kill me, but I'm alive. And you have new life in me. So surrender to God. Surrender not out of exhaustion because you tried everything you could think of yourself and it all failed. Instead, surrender into his arms out of joy because you know the God who created all things, the heavens and the earth, is loving you and has been with you the whole time. Accept his love in your life and see what those plans are that he has for you. We put our faith into action each and every day of our lives when we stop running away from God. And we turn around and we run towards God. So this week in your journey, in your own devotional times, stop to think, what am I running away from? What am I trying to avoid by going to those lower decks on the boat to sleep through it? And surrender whatever that is to God. Say, God, I'm turning right back around and I'm running towards you. I see your love for me. That is unconditional. I see that you're sitting next to me in those meetings, in those doctor's appointments, or, or just when I feel alone. I see you with me. I don't want to run away like Jonah did to avoid. I want to run towards your arms. So Jonah had to go in the opposite direction, and, and he had to go through a storm, and then he had to get swallowed by a whale for God to finally get his attention. And God is getting your attention too. It's a still, small voice that you hear. Maybe it's that voice in your head that you know you need to listen to, but for whatever reason, you don't want to. Or maybe it's that gut feeling that you know, I really need to do this. This is, this is what God wants me to do, but I'm not quite sure, and, and I just can't get rid of that sense. But in that stillness, when it's quiet, we get to hear God's voice just like Elijah did when he was running away from his enemies. He may have run away from his enemies, but he was running towards God. And he goes, God, I don't know what's happening. I know I can't do it, but I need you. And he let God take care of him. I was wrong for not trusting my little sister Lulu when she was first giving me directions. I falsely thought that I knew better than she did because I was the adult. I was the driver, but instead I needed to just trust her. She gave me no reason to not trust her, and I just needed to listen to what she was saying. And she got me there. She got both of us there on time. We had a great lunch. And God is doing the same in each one of our lives. God is getting our attentions, and we simply need to listen and to trust him. It may not make sense in the moment, but in God's great plan, it does make sense. That God has great things planned for us because his love for you is that great. So whenever you catch yourself starting to turn to go run in the other way, take a pause and turn back to God. Say, God, you have my attention. I'm listening. Because God's getting your attention. 
So let's be still and listen to his voice and know that his directions don't need to be redirected like Siri needs sometimes because his plans are perfect. He's not going to mislead you. He's right there with you the whole time. So let's pray. God, we know that you are always with us. And even the times when we try and run away because somehow we think we know better, God, thank you for loving us and going right beside us. So help us this week, help us today to stop running and to turn back to you into your loving arms because it, you are our firm foundation and we know that when the storms arise we don't have to be afraid we don't have to be fearful because your peace is with us you are the calmer of the storm we thank you for that help us to run towards you each and every day it's in jesus name we pray amen